All righty, class is back in session, everybody. Uh, welcome back to the Let's Build That App.com channel. I uh, hope you guys are doing well, and I hope you're ready for the continuation of our Firebase chat application series. Uh, last video, I showed you guys how to create this page here. So we are back in create new message view. And every time we hit the, uh, the new message button at the very bottom, we are presented with this page here. So new message and all the users are being loaded up, right? So today's lesson is going to be relatively simple here. And what I want to do is every time I click on one of these users here, right? Uh, I actually want to transition to the, the chat log view. So let me show you that in the, uh, the finished version of the application here. I'm going to click on the uh, misty at gmail.com. Click into that. Uh, we actually load the misty at gmail page here. Uh, going back, we can, you know, load whatever we want, uh, flowers at gmail. And uh, you'll see the flowers right here at the very top. So if I draw this arrow here, you'll see the flowers at gmail.com. So the actual, uh, the actual task to accomplish in today's video is to build out this functionality here first, and then we'll talk about the, uh, the messages being loaded inside of this center area here, uh, this center area here, and maybe talk about uh, how to send images later on. Uh, hopefully that sounds good. We are going to head back into Xcode now. So dum dum dum. Uh, we're currently inside of create new message view here. And you see our new message view is right here on line 41. And the first thing I will actually uh, accomplish here is to somehow uh, tell our application which user we're selecting. So if I click on leaves, I actually want to know that the leaves user is being selected. Or maybe if I click on the waterfall user here, I need to somehow tell this screen here uh, which user I'm picking. So uh, this is really simple. If you go inside of the uh, create new message view here, uh, just simply create a callback, which will be uh, did select a new user. And then we will just set this guy equal to some kind of callback. And uh, we'll leave it like this for now. So did select new user. So that's a, a decent name. And the callback will have the signature of uh, invoking with a actual chat user. So what are my chat users? So we have five of them right here. And uh, that's what my callback will be. And then uh, finally, we have the for each loop here that generates all of our uh, users per row. And then the button handles the uh, dismissal of the screen here. Uh, the next thing I want to do is every time I select one of these users, I am going to simply say did select new user. And we will have to pass in the user for our for each loop above. Okay, not too bad. If you try to resume, there should be a couple of error message. Um, error, error messages, and there should be one right here, but this is commented out, so that's okay. Uh, if you hit Command-5, you'll hit this tab here, and just click into this. It'll bring you to the uh, main messages view. And, uh, you know, looking at the red guy there, click on that. It'll tell you to fill out your callback that you defined. Hit Enter here, or hit the Brace uh, user and in like so uh, you can actually print the user so user dot email that uh, that actually works and you know maybe I'll run this in the iPhone 13 Pro simulator to see what we have inside of our application all right uh, looks like I haven't ran the simulator in a while so it's gonna take a little bit of time to load up and it's a little large, but here is my uh, current user logged in here. If I uh, show the console at the very back uh, right here, let me just alt tab back. 
I can click on this and let's click on the waterfall there. Uh, you'll see waterfall1 at gmail.com. Uh, this is being printed because of this line that we just introduced. All right, uh, nothing too bad there. Very simple callback to invoke. And the next thing I want to do is uh, now that I know which new user is being selected on this page, right? I want to somehow transition to this page here with a name at the very top. So in other words, I want to click on that, click on the flowers, and you'll see that up there. So how exactly do we do that inside of a Swift UI, right? Well, it's a little tricky, so I'll try to walk through this one step at a time here. And the first thing we are going to do is uh, for the create new message view, the callback, we actually get a handle of the user. So I'm simply going to do this right here. So state var and chat user. And uh, we will call this the chat user optional. And that means that the chat user will be nil at the very beginning. Uh, hopefully this is pretty obvious because when your application starts up, you haven't really selected a new user just yet. So that's why the state is optional nil. Uh, next thing we'll do is instead of our callback here, we'll say self that chat user equals the user uh, being passed back through the callback. And uh, this is a very easy way of just managing which user you're selecting. So that is not too bad. And the next thing we will have to do here is to figure out uh, when we click this button here and click this here, we need to transition to a new page. So we need to navigate to a new page. That's probably a more precise uh, way of putting it. And a lot of you guys know that um, instead of Swift UI, right, uh, when you want to navigate to a new page, you will use something called a navigation link. So I'll show you uh, how this works here. Um, you can actually go to uh, your messages view, which is this uh, vertical scroll view here, right? You see the username and message sent to user. If you wrap all of these guys, so let me just close out of that. If you wrap this whole thing right here in a navigation link, you can kind of see what that'll do. Uh, let me just show you what I mean here. Uh, maybe I'll just do this right here. So navigation link, and you can open it up. It'll provide you with a ton of different, um, you know, optional initializers here. And the easiest one is to use this destination one. And for some reason, this guy doesn't always uh, seem to pull up the right one for me. I don't really know why. So here is the destination with the label. I believe this top one, destination label, is only available with uh, iOS 15. <laughs> so uh, hopefully you guys are updated on the latest Xcode. And then uh, above, this is the destination. So you can just call it that for now, nothing too bad. And then I will take all of this code below and I'll paste it right inside of my label. So once I do that, right, uh, you'll see that for all of my, you know, dummy message views here, uh, I think they'll change this blue color. And then now you can click into that. It'll link you with a navigation style into this destination view there. So that's how uh, one version of your navigation link will work. And the other way of, you know, navigating to a different page is to use a, uh, a different style of a navigation link instead. And this might be a little tricky to show, so I will go back up to here. Uh, you'll look at your main messages view, right? And you have your navigation view, you have your nav bar, this messages view here and then a new message button at the bottom. So what I'll do uh, in addition to the messages view is you can add a navigation link and one of the uh, initializers that are available here is the one with the uh, is active and destination and this uh, title key, just use an empty string, it should be fine. And the thing about this is 
You have to specify an active Boolean of a binding. Uh, this is pretty easy. Just look at the code. So I'll just stop talking. Um, should navigate. So navigate to uh, chat log view, and we'll set this to false in the very beginning. And then we will use dollar sign there to get the uh, binding value out of it. Hit enter there. And we'll say chat log view. Okay, uh, finally, I will go back down to the uh, new message button, I believe. So I'll just command click into that. It'll take me down to the callback area from earlier here. And I'll do one thing. So, ba -ba -ba. so the moment that I tap on a user, I'm going to execute a toggle on this Boolean there. And what you'll see is it should navigate me to uh, the new page. So click on that here and I'll do the waterfall at gmail.com. And so what you see is uh, the select new user page will dismiss downwards. And then once it's done, it'll actually uh, transition into that chat log view. So let's attempt to do that one more time. Uh, we'll use uh, haha at gmail.com and you'll see this chat log view here. So that's uh, kind of how you would execute like two different navigation links and they're both really useful and I, I tend to use both uh, styles depending on the situation for my apps. All right, um, hopefully not too confusing. Again, uh, leave any questions down below if you have any. All right, moving on to the next piece of functionality, I want to actually uh, load the, let's say, misty at gmail.com here. So at the very top, right, I have the misty at gmail.com, and I want you guys to think about how to actually uh, put this name all the way at the very top here. Okay, uh, give me five seconds. All right, yummy, yummy water. Okay, so uh, for the top area, misty at gmail.com, I'm gonna build it out using a, uh, a different view file inside of uh, either in a new file or I can just build it out here. Uh, it should be maybe a little easier down here. So da, 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 how do I want to do this? I'm gonna call this the chat log view, be of type view and Every view needs a body, and then the body will be comprised of a scroll view dot navigation title. And here is my chat log view, and I think that's all I want. So uh, we'll just do this for now for each zero dot uh, ten in that and num in and text a fake message for now. Okay. That's how I like to construct my temporary views inside of the Swift UI. And the last thing I need to do is for my chat log view, right? Uh, I'm going to replace this view here with this actual struct. So we will go back up to the body and uh, the navigation link is somewhere right here. So we will take this here. I will put that there and construct it like so. All right, uh, pretty good stuff. I feel like I can actually move this down to the bottom area, but I guess uh, we'll just leave this here for now. Um, bup, 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 click on that, we'll have LBTA user, and you'll see your uh, fake messages right here. So the next thing to do is to, uh, for the chat log view, right, I can, you know, maybe pass in the chat user. So I'll click into this guy to go back down to the definition. Uh, we are somewhere right here. Um, ba -ba -ba. We'll just declare a chat user and we'll say chat user. And this one is going to be a little bit tricky and I'll declare it as an optional. And the reason why I'm doing this is because uh, the chat user here is optional. So it makes it a little bit easier to uh, keep it as an optional here. And 
I've said this before, but I, I really don't like dealing with optionals, but uh, this just makes the video lesson a little easier. Okay, so once you have your chat user defined as a dependency there, you'll see that you'll need to pass in a, uh, a chat user to this actual chat log view. So what I'll do is, uh, let's see, for the chat log view, right, I have this title here. You don't really need to do that anymore. So you can say uh, email, and this is uh, optional, so I'll coalesce it there. And go back to the chat log view here. You can click into that, and this guy is the self.chat user. Uh, remember, we set this up in our callback, so... Um, we are going to run this one more time. All right, click on a new message. We are going to hit waterfall at gmail.com and you'll see waterfall1 at gmail.com up here. And depending on which user you select, LBTA user, uh, you'll see that email uh, at the very top of your navigation title bar. Uh, if you want to make the title bar uh, not as large. You can go back to the chat log view here. And uh, let's see, navigation display mode dot inline is what you will need. Uh, new message view, let's see, haha, at gmail.com, and you'll see this now. Okay, so uh, not too bad. I think that's going to wrap it up for uh, today's lesson. Again, whenever you need to uh, navigate to a different page, you're gonna have to use the navigation link view uh, instead of your navigation view hierarchy. And if you set that up correctly, you can trigger your navigation link through uh, an actual UI element like this, or you can trigger it through uh, a state Boolean uh, binding variable. And again, both, uh, both styles are actually really, really useful. So I, uh, I suggest learning how to uh, copy this kind of strategy here, uh, if possible. And uh, you know, the callback just toggles the Boolean and we set up our user on this state variable here. And up above, we just pass it to this chat log view. Uh, again, nothing too complicated once you see the, the flow of logic. And um, this is just one way of uh, doing this type of transition to a new page like this. Uh, later on, we'll find that we are going to encounter a couple of different bugs. So uh, we'll fix those bugs whenever that time comes. All right, questions or comments, make sure to leave them below. And I'll see you guys next time.